Hello, this is Mark Boyer, and I haven't made a video in a while. And uh, basically, I've been lying low. And uh, since uh, I made a New Year's resolution, I've been promoting uh, this May Day strike. Okay, and I think it's very uh, good, good thing to do. Uh, I posted this uh, by mid-January as a PDF file on uh, my website. And anyone can download it and produce a two-page pamphlet just like this by going through your printer and doing it. Okay? Um, and that's the intent, get people involved in doing something about the total abuse of power that's occurred. Now, uh, my way of doing it is promoting a May Day strike. Okay? Now, it starts off, the pamphlet, okay, with this apology, uh, the apology that the, the, it is a correct general impression that uh, the Occupy movement wasn't successful in doing anything at all, okay? The press portrayed it as being disenfranchised, you know, disenfranchised, grumbling, poor, with no real set mission or anything that took, you know, like they, they disenfranchised. Uh, there are lots of people who say that every Occupy movement in virtually every major city was chilled by what I consider a common purpose, okay? Junior and senior candidates of a cause called common purpose. But that's another issue, okay? And you can find stuff on my website in regard to that. Now, bottom line is it is correct that in my observation, that as to the I Ching, uh, we were drawn out in winter, which is a strategic advantage, so that they can beat the crap out of us in the spring because we're disenfranchised, okay? And that's exactly why I, my personal belief is why we were drawn out in uh, a movement was made in the fall, bordering on early winter, okay? And uh, basically they froze everybody out, okay? And, uh, that's what I deal with at the beginning. Okay, now the reality is, is the Occupy World Movement, which I'm moving to the second point, said had a very unified thing, saying that they wanted the basic 1948 United Nations Declaration of Human Rights to be understood and followed by our leaders. Okay, now the reality is that happened after World War II, and it was the way they got the United Nations formed. Okay? It was the aspirations of those who've just gone through hell. And it was a minimum that was being observed in the free world. And you know what? We lost it. Okay? Somehow it never got ratified and we've lost it. Okay? And that is a reality that we of the third and fourth generation of a curse in the second commandment have to live with. Okay? It's triggered our end times, at which we're, you know, it, there's a greater order of things here. But the reality is, is a general strike is a peaceful way to get across the fact that the Declaration of Human Rights is totally been violated throughout the world. That's it, end of story. And in North America, it was done through something called lexicography okay which is the perversion of the law through words and the oath to the bar directly prohibits this okay law is nothing but words and through lexicography it was done and if you look up the color of office okay you will see that it says by the people for the economy under duress of a bad contract, done in 1992, which was the full subjection of NAFTA, okay? Now, to understand NAFTA, you have to go one deeper, or several deeper, to the source, okay? In 1538, King Henry VIII separated from the Pope, and in 1539, the great charters of England were set up, like the Hudson's Bay Company and the East India Company were formed. Several other charters, okay, probably the big banks. Now, now the, maybe even the City of London, because it was incorporated in 14-whatever. 
Now, regardless, okay? Now, at that time, there was a debate that was settled by King Henry VIII, and it was, should we give these person, personhood to these great charters? And the king came down real strong on it and said, no way, that can't happen because within a generation, the Commonwealth will be destroyed, okay? Now, let's beam that up to today. The NAFTA agreement is at its heart, the source document is the Hudson's Bay Company, okay? The original Great Charter of 1538. And within a generation of it being deployed, it has destroyed democracy. It has destroyed the world. Okay, it's totally destroyed the economies of the world, which is a biblical prophecy, okay? Now the reality is, is King Henry VIII back then when he created the Great Charters warned us of this. The, the, everything was set up and in, 15, in 1992, the Great Charter of England of the Hudson's Bay Company was the foundation of NAFTA and it did destroy the foundations of everything that we call great and secure. We humans call great and secure, which is, can be found in the Declaration of Human Rights. The reality is, is a May Day strike is in the spring. Biblically, it's when the fig leaves sprout their shoots, okay? And that's a very strong biblical prophecy, okay? And this is a button that I'm trying to push, okay? This is why I'm setting up my May Day resolutions. I have to wake up, I have to start acting. And how to do that is push the buttons, okay? Now, the one issue here is the Declaration, being recognized the Declaration of Human Rights. And on the last page, the only way we're going to get that is by offering amnesty, okay? It worked in South Africa, it worked everywhere it's ever been tried. End of story, chapter and verse. Authority have got us so hoodwinked, it's pathetic, okay? The reality is, as far as I'm concerned, fluoride, must work because absolutely nobody is indicting anyone over aspartame. And aspartame is killing millions and millions and millions of people. And its death toll will continue for an entire generation or two. And it's due to a guy called Bromsfeld his efforts when he took over this uh, corporation that made, made aspartame and it couldn't get past because it's a neurotoxin. It makes women impotent. It's, it's a really nasty thing and no one has been charged. Okay? It, it's a crime against humanity. The fact that the safeguards of the FDA have all been disappeared over an agenda, uh, over what's called a mutually agreed upon international obligation in the 1998, uh, re 1992 Rio conference or 98 Rio conference. And that's called Agenda 21. Agenda 21 is, an, is a diabolical plot, totally back by the Illuminati, the Masons, and administered by uh, common purpose, which has infiltrated the entire infrastructure of every government in the Western and Eastern Hemisphere. It's diabolical, okay? Since the 1950s, okay? They've been selectively finding youth to uh, earmark and put in first municipal governments, then provincial and federal governments at, at a foundation. And they've taught an entire generation and two now, the second generation is already in place, 
where we are their servants. And they get upset when we, when we actually say, oh, no, 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 no. You are our servant. Okay? The whole thing has been turned around by people who followed the example of how they did it in Hitler with the Hitler Youth. And bottom line is, is the whole function and purpose of this movement that was started with the end of World War II called Common Purpose was to totally take away everything. And it really is the sins of the third and fourth generation as to the second commandment. Okay, it really is, okay, we really are in our last days. And that should be a very happy occasion because our Lord Jesus Christ is descending real soon. And I'm pushing buttons for it to happen. Somebody has to push some buttons. I'm following a path of being the man from the West of Isaiah 59. For the last year or two, I've been saying flat out that evil forces control the world. And if no one can repent, then they will perish. That's prophecy from Jesus. Okay. The reality is, is everything is in place to change everything. The vehicle to change everything came up as Occupy, uh, Occupy Now. Occupy Now just happened to be 70 weeks before December 21st, 2012. There's a huge coincidence. That's a Daniel's prophecy. So, I need to end that tangent. Uh, basically, we live in interesting times. This is a Chinese curse which uh, ended the, China, the Xi'an dynasty. And uh, this is built in the Bible as the culmination of an age, okay? The culmination of a judge is the hope of mankind. And there's a difference, okay? The second commandment is a promise of the end, the culmination of the age judges. It promises 1,000 generations of those who love him. And that goes back to the last ice age, 40,000 years. Our written history goes back seven at the most. And uh, that's called the Grand Awakening, the return to our golden age in paradise on earth, on the other side of the divide. And uh, that's my hope. That's my dream, that's my plan, and who can hold it against me if it doesn't happen?